News, Polly Toynbee from The Guardian to MEP Martin Daubney. All of that coming up. Where are we going to start? Polly, shall we start with the front page of the Sunday Times and David Cameron back on the front pages at last? At last. He's been very quiet for three years. This is a sense of pent up to... I think, that's, um, I think that's been the surprise of the book. What's not a surprise is there's not much mea culpa for the fact that this three years of mayhem was started by him for the same sorts of reasons as he accused Boris. Boris backed something he didn't believe in to benefit his political career. You could say the same about calling the referendum. Katie, um, the, a lot about this in the Sunday Times naturally bigs the book up. Do you think it makes any difference politically, really? I mean, I don't think it's a surprise that David Cameron is unhappy with the Brexiteers. And I think that Leave voters will probably look at what David Cameron is saying and think he actually never got it. I think the difficulty for David Cameron is he's trying to find a legacy. He's trying to change how he is remembered. But I don't think he can actually do that until we know what's happening with Brexit. And in a way, he'll do better in history if there's this success of Brexit. Meanwhile, we are on the lip of some kind of general election before too long. And it's fairly clear that Boris Johnson wants to fight this as yep. the people versus Parliament yes. and the Sunday Express plays right into that. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a survey by Comrades that would come as absolutely no surprise. 73% of Remainers also don't, 8 in 10 overall, mm. desperate reform required, and the conclusion is we're at crisis point, and I think that's absolutely the case. The mother of all parliaments, I think, has been laughed at on the world. It's not very new, is it? It's been like that for a long it's, time. But it's higher From the and higher now. the expenses scandal, and even before that, uh, if you ask mm. people cold, what do you think of MPs, it tends to but be... But they're saying, basically, you know, they are not okay. doing their jobs. They've had three years to do one thing. Why aren't they sacked? like I would be as a bricklayer or an electrician. There's a complete disconnect between ordinary people and those in Parliament. And in this totally new situation, we don't quite know that all party loyalties are beginning to break down. Lots of people are looking at the Liberal Democrats yep. and wondering how high they can rise, just like the Brexit party, how high can they rise at the election? Yes, yeah, so we're seeing the realignment of politics, at least in Parliament, and the question is how is it reflected in a general election? So Sam Jima is the latest Tory MP to move to join the Lib Dems. It's worth noting he had the whip withdrawn uh, a few weeks ago for rebelling on Brexit anyway. Um, he slams populist Johnson and basically suggests that the Conservative Party, as it currently is, is not something that doesn't reflect his views. I think, actually, if you look at Sam Jima's politics, he does have things in common with Boris Johnson. But the issue he's, of Brexit... He's quite a low-tax politician. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is a kind of low-tax, pro-austerity conservative who is now slightly awkwardly inside the Lib Dems. Yeah, and I think this is the question, because across in the Sunday Times, you have Swinson's Lib Dems plan for 100 seats. You look at the new MPs that have joined the Liberal Democrat Party, and they all have different views on domestic policy. And I think there's the big challenge is, is Brexit su such a big beast here that they can all unite around that and it doesn't matter about taxation or various views mm. on austerity yeah. and the coalition? I, I think they're going to have a struggle if they, manage, if they move past that point. I think that's true. It's also true of the Brexit Party, which is full of people from, you know, revolutionary communists to the virtual far... Well, you can call it broad touch, but you haven't yet got any other policies. And I think the Lib Dems, too, will have trouble uh, melding that's together that's these defectors like to about, from everywhere. The, the word populist being, being used you know, as shorthand for racist. The word nationalism applied to England as a terrible thing, but of course it's great in Scotland. This, this is nonsense. Okay. You know, I think he, he, he won't be missed by the Conservatives. Right, well, let, let's return to the papers for a moment, um, because I mentioned the, the Boris Johnson interview in the Mail on Sunday. Very, very interesting, that, Polly. He still says inside that paper that he is not going to go and ask for an extension and he is not going to break the law. And I wonder why. The only explanation I can get is the front page of the uh, Sunday Telegraph, which is a Matt cartoon suggesting he's going to try and get his dog to eat it. Bizarre our politics have become. You know, this is kind of 12-year-old stuff. I'm the Incredible Hulk. I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous and absurd. And inside, you have this... Boris worship, you know, Boris cuddly dog, uh, but be, be disgusting about this. But it's gone beyond what we're used to. We're used to pretty bad for this. But sort it of cuts stuff. through, don't you think? I mean, people watch it and they listen to his words, and he has this habit of finding phrases that yeah. people are laughing about in the pub afterwards or in Precisely. the coffee shop. Yeah, and I think this is quite typical Johnson, which is he's come up with something outlandish on, on the Hulk, and, and now we're all talking about the Incredible Hulk rather than what exactly he is trying to propose on Brexit. Mm. Northern Ireland specific backstop, checks on goods. Does how he's going to get out of this, no, this mess? No, well, I don't think he does. So, so how we, but I think he's half right about the Hulk thing, and it's, it's not him that's the Hulk, I think it's the electorate. 
the electorate are absolutely furious with broken politics, as mm. that previous yeah. survey said. He's got a real job in his hands because, because we need to get Brexit through. This is just going to get worse and worse and but worse. But I think he, he looks as if he has got a plan, and it's yeah. going to be to ditch the DUP, to have an Ireland-only solution, which, of course, people must remember. They may, may say, oh, thank goodness, we've got a deal. That will be a significantly worse deal for yeah, England than the May deal would be, because it means England comes out of the, uh, of the customs union and we have you know, very, very difficult borders as but a result. There's a lot of hurdles to get over before we get there, Katie, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, Aren't I think there? we are seeing the beginnings of where Boris Johnson perhaps thinks he can find a deal. I think figures in number 10 are bullish that they are leaving on the 31st of October, whatever happens. We're hearing of a secret plan that free advisers know of, which means that they are not going to break the law but mm. get around it. But I think if you look at who Boris Johnson's meeting on Monday, John called Juncker, I think one of the things is we've had the Brexit secretary this week suggest they are getting some to ministers, but there is one red line that they haven't found a way around yet. So checks on goods on the island of Ireland, and I it's think kind that's going to be one, that isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very big one. Boris... have to get the EU to move on that. Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to see him pressing at Brussels for this week. If Boris comes back with a reheated Theresa May surrender deal, the British electorate will not stomach it, and they will punish him terribly.